Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again with some Madden NFL 20. And we're breaking down more, 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 more football. So we have officially reached what week is this? Week 15 already? Holy crap. Yeah, the playoffs are right around the corner. Season's practically over. And we kick off on Thursday night with the New York Jets visiting the Baltimore Ravens. I don't really know what there is to be said that you guys wouldn't already get the idea about when it comes to this game. Uh, it's it's pretty, pretty cut and dry what's going to happen. The, the Ravens are probably going to win this game by 30. And that's not even an exaggeration of just how great the Ravens have been playing this year and how poorly the New York Jets have been playing. They got taken to the wire by the Miami Dolphins last week, and the Dolphins only kicked field goals. So, <laughs> a one-point win against a team that only kicked field goals. Huh. So, I'm taking the Ravens big time. I think they're going to have a multi-score win in this game. Then, on Sunday, we have the Patriots and the Bengals. So, obviously, the Patriots need to cheat against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm sure most of you saw they were filming the Cincinnati Bengals sideline to get their calls and all that nonsense. So it's really telling to me that the 10 and 3 New England Patriots have to cheat against the 11, oh, excuse me, the 1 and 12, I think it is, Cincinnati Bengals. No, that's obviously not right. I guess it is 1 and 12. Um, how are we in week 15 with their 1 and 12? It's only, oh, no, that makes sense. So, yeah, the Bengals. Bengals are bad. Patriots needed a cheat. So, that's pretty sad. Very, very sad. I'm going to pick the Patriots just because the talent is better. But um, I wouldn't be surprised, honest to goodness, if the Bengals come out and they show something offensively that, frankly, the Patriots just can't defend. And I'm not saying that as... An indictment on the Patriots defense. I'm just saying Patriots offense has a inability to move the football. I think would be the correct terminology. And a guy like Zach Taylor, I think, could take advantage of that in a big way. I don't, I don't foresee that happening. I'm just saying of all the, the, uh, the crazier things that could happen, just keep this one on your list. But as soon as the Patriots go up by like three scores, then... Then you can come back to this video and comment and laugh at me and tell me how stupid I am. But, I got the Patriots in that game. Then we have the Buccaneers taking on the Lions. So, two bottom feeders in the NFC. The Buccaneers, they lead the league in turnovers. <laughs> Jameis Winston, I just saw something. He has thrown more interceptions than like five quarterbacks combined. I think he's thrown 23 this year. So, yeah, that's a mark of an elite quarterback. If Jameis Winston is quarterbacking the Cincinnati Bengals next year, I'll buy – or what? If Jameis Winston is quarterbacking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year, I'll buy his jersey because he she shouldn't be the quarterback for that football team. I mean, that's just – that's pathetic. You, you can't win in this league turning the ball over that much. He shouldn't even be starting right now, honestly. He's garbage. That being said, the Lions – I don't know what's going on with their QB room right now, but if David Blau has to start, honestly, I've got confidence in him. He showed me some good things on Thanksgiving and not so many good things last week against Minnesota, but Minnesota's Minnesota. I mean, they're so hit and miss, but they they beat who they're supposed to beat in most situations, and they were supposed to beat the Lions, and they did. So I, I have faith in David Blau to at least use what he's got around him to win this football game but that would also mean <laughs> the Lions defense would have to stop something and that never ever looks likely especially with Jameis Winston who not only is he a turnover machine but tends to like to throw for 400 yards a game so yeah, I've got the I've got the Buccaneers in this game then the Texans and the Titans Titans are coming off a massive win for them in terms of playoff picture and the Texans are coming off probably the worst, most brutal loss 
a division leader can take to a team that at the time only had two wins. Um, <laughs> Texans got schooled by Denver, and that wasn't even close. I mean, the final score, you might look at it and be like, oh, well, you know, it wasn't that bad. But no, it was that bad. A lot of those points came in garbage time. And the Titans, as much as I love the Texans, I have to be completely honest when, in my assessment, uh, the Tennessee Titans under Ryan Tannehill are a completely different football team than the one they were when Marcus Mariota was at quarterback. And the team that I see now is a playoff team, is a team that runs the football very well with Derrick Henry, and that just opens everything up, and it makes Ryan Tannehill's job so much easier. And, I mean, if, if Miami had done that with Tannehill years ago when they drafted him, given him a solid run game to build the pass off of, then he probably would have ended up being an elite quarterback. Because I have always loved Ryan Tannehill. I think he's got that kind of ability about him, and there was a reason why he was picked in the first round. You know, it's not because he's some scrub. And there's a reason why he's still a quarterback in the league, and it's not because he's some scrub. You know, he, he's very talented. And there's a reason why some guys, you know, sit on, sit in the free agent pool and never get calls because they're not good. And yes, you know exactly who I'm talking about when it comes to the quarterback position and free agents who talk the talk but can't walk the walk. And Ryan Tannehill is better than him and he is better than all the quarterbacks in the free agent pool right now. And Ryan Tannehill is going to take the Tennessee Titans to a victory and the division lead on Sunday and as much as I want to see the Texans win the division and go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl they're in that second tier you know what I mean there's like the elite division leaders and then there's just the second tier of division leaders and I mean the Cowboys are literally in their own division they are in the NFC East that's completely different there's the elite tier of division leaders the B tier of division leaders, and then there's like this middle murky water where nobody quite is, and then there's the Dallas Cowboys way there, way down there at the bottom, and the Titans are in that, the Titans are in the B tier as well if they win this game, I'm not saying they're an elite football team, but they, they still to me have an edge over Houston, and Houston, they've got a long way to go to be legit contenders in this league, I feel, I mean, they're good enough right now to win ball games, but they're not good enough to win playoff games. You know what I mean? So I've got Tennessee on Sunday. Then we've got the Broncos visiting the Kansas City Chiefs. And now the Broncos are riding a high wave of momentum after that massive win in Houston that I just talked about. So if they could carry that into a win here in Kansas City, it might shake a lot of the playoff, you know, that middle area of the playoff, the wild card area up. Because if, ten, if uh, Kansas City has to fall to a 5, or excuse me, they won't fall to 5. But if they have to fall to 4, then that changes, you know, home playoff games if they win in the wild card round. And nobody wants to play at Arrowhead unless you're Tom Brady. And if Kansas City has to go on the road, I think that significantly hinders their chances of winning. So, it's a, it's, it's a big game in the grand scheme of things. And I think Kansas City... You know, they've got a stranglehold over the Denver Broncos. The Broncos just cannot beat the, the Chiefs, especially with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. And it's it's. I know these Chiefs are a lot different than they were last year. They're not as flashy. Pat hasn't thrown for 50 touchdowns. But they have a legit shot of being a Super Bowl contender at the very least. You know, my projection for them is the uh, divisional round. You know, I don't see them getting bumped in the wild card, but I necessarily don't see them getting out of the divisional round to the AFC Championship. But uh, they're a lot better than the Broncos, and at least just based on skill, I know this is probably what I was saying last week about the Broncos and the Texans, but at least based on skill, Kansas City should have an easy game. Uh, and I, Drew Locke, kid has impressed me. He has impressed me every step of the way, you know, especially against a pretty, pretty good defense is what he played last week so I, I, anything can happen but I like Kansas City in this game then Miami Dolphins and New York Giants um, I may or may not be going to this game 
Uh, jury's still kind of out. We're still waiting to see if the tickets are going to be available for us. And honestly, I'm not going to be heartbroken if we don't go. But I'm going to be pretty excited if we do go because I just love going to football games. Especially between two of the three worst teams in the National Football League. I love being a Giants fan. It's so fun. Monday night was probably the greatest experience of my entire life. You know, I shat on Eli Manning all week, and my mom was laughing in my face, talking about how Eli Manning was back, and he's he's so good, and look at how great Eli is, and we're going to beat the Eagles. And all I could do in the second half was laugh, because I knew exactly what was going to happen. This team is so paint by numbers. Like, I knew the minute they came out of the locker room, they looked like a different football team. And just from that second, when they you know marched down out it was over it was I to me I saw the writing on the wall and the game was over before they even stepped on the field in the second half and I know it went to overtime but uh, the Eagles are a better football team than the New York Giants the records show it the talent shows it the fact that they were even down by 14 at one point is a ringing endorsement of the NFC East and I get people want to say, well, division games are tighter. Because you know your opponent, you know you play harder in a division game. No. You beat the teams you're supposed to beat. The New York Giants are a team you beat by 30. You are supposed to beat the New York Giants by 30 points. And I'm saying that as a New York Giants fan. We can't stop a nosebleed. We can't stop a draft. And, and, and you know, we can't stop the air coming through an open window by shutting the damn window. Because we wouldn't know how. We'd mess it up. We'd open the window even more. Dumbasses. I mean, this team is bad. And the Eagles are supposed to be in the hunt for the NFC East. But they fall down 17-3 to at halftime against the New York football Giants. How the hell do, excuse me, do they expect to go play the Cowboys and beat the Cowboys? And win the division. That's just that's just laughable at this point. That they even have a pipe dream of winning this division. And, and, you know, it's not even the fact that they have a pipe dream of winning the division. Some of these Eagles fans have a pipe dream of winning the division and winning a Super Bowl. If the winner of the NFC East makes it to the divisional round of the of the playoffs, I will give everyone who comments the word. Or the, the phrase, the NFC East is terrible. I will give everyone who comments that $20 if the winner of the NFC East goes to the divisional round of the playoffs. That is how confident I am the winner of the NFC East is getting bumped in the wild card round. And they will be never heard of again, at least for the rest of January and February. But I've got the Giants in this game. I mean, I, I, just, I, I, cannot, I cannot fathom... The New York Giants losing to the Miami Dolphins at this stage. And yes, the Miami Dolphins have played better football over the past month. They look like the better team. They can move the ball when they need to. They can stop people. They got in the field goal range and hit on, what, what was it, six field goals, seven field goals last week? Broke a franchise record. That, that I mean, that's scoring. They scored 21 points off field goals. And they came, what, maybe five, six yards away from beating the New York Jets by just field goals? I mean, come on. But I swear to Jesus, if Eli Manning comes out on Sunday and he stinks up the joint against the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with all my Giants merch in this room. It might end up on the, on, on the trash heap outside. My signed Saquon Barkley jersey might end up being toilet paper for the next month. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do if we lose to the Dolphins. That might be the end of me. It just, I, I just might be done. You might never see me again on, on YouTube. I might never speak in public. I might never show my face in public ever again. I just cannot fathom the New York Giants losing to that Miami Dolphins team right now. I can't see it. 
I can't see it. My blinders are on. I just, if it happens, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. But I've got New York in this game. Then the Eagles and the Redskins. The Redskins do not have a chance, IMO, to win this game. But that being said, like I just said, when the Eagles drop a 14, drop into a 14-point hole at half against the Giants, and the Redskins have arguably looked a little better offensively for the past two weeks than the New York Giants, then I don't know what the hell to expect out of the NFC East. The Redskins, for all intents and purposes, are probably going to win the division. I don't know how the hell... Well, no, I think they're officially eliminated now. But, whatever. If there was even a chance that they could, they probably would. This division's that bad. And honestly, I wanted to see that happen. I wanted to see Washington win the division just to be a smack in the face of everybody about how bad this division is. Because it's awful. You know, like how the Redskins could have had three wins coming into Week 13 and still won the whole damn division. That's ridiculous. But, um... I'm going to take Washington in this game, honestly. The defense couldn't stop Eli Manning last week for, for a half. The Eagles defense couldn't. What are they going to do for a whole game against a young quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, who has looked marginally better, very slightly better, as the weeks have gone on. And, you know, Terry McLaurin's out there, and I don't know, Geis might be hurt again. I don't know what's going on with that kid. He's always hurt. But... Yeah, just I just like I like Washington this week. So sorry, Eagles fans. I really hope you lose. Not even because you beat the Giants. I don't care about that. I knew we were gonna lose. It's the fact that I just want to see you lose against the Washington Redskins. That being said, next week we'll probably lose to the Redskins, and I'll eat crow for the rest of my life. And then I might have to jump out a window, jump off a bridge. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. The New York Giants don't finish the season with at least four wins. I think I'll die. So I've got the uh, Redskins in that game. Then the e the Seahawks will visit the Panthers. The Seahawks should have this game in the bag easily. But then again, the Seahawks got taken to school by the Rams last week. And the Rams, that was their best game of the year. They have not done anything outside of beat Seattle this entire season. So I don't know. If you're a Seahawks fan, I'm worried. Honestly, I mean, I don't see you guys beating San Francisco again after that performance on, on what was that, Sunday night? On Sunday night. I don't see you beating uh, San Francisco again. I don't see you winning your division. I don't see you going to the NFC Championship. So uh, I'm, I am going to pick the Seahawks in this game, but I don't think it's going to be enough to help get you guys to where you want to be. So sorry, Panthers fans. You're going to lose for nothing. Then the Bears will visit the Packers. I mean, the Bears still somehow have a shot at this whole damn thing called the playoffs. And they need to beat Green Bay. And it's possible. Yeah, they got schooled on opening night in Chicago. But if you ever wanted to win, to energize your team for the last three weeks of a season, to make a stretch run to the wild card it's in Lambeau in the freezing temperatures on a random Sunday in December like you gotta pull this thing off if you're Chicago if you want even a glimmer of hope that you can win anything and head to the playoffs so I don't really have faith in Chicago offensively they uh, have looked like garbage for most of the year and defensively they're just a shell of their former unit that they were last year. Honestly, I mean, that's just what I see from when I watch these games. They struggled for quite a bit of that game, you know, against uh, against Dallas. And, yeah, I know they, they did well enough to make Dallas look goofy, but the Cowboys are the Cowboys. What, what the hell do you want? They suck. You should beat that team, for Christ's sake. But, uh... Yeah, I'm going to take the Packers in this game. You know, Packers like to play ugly football. Aaron Rodgers said it. They beat the Redskins in an ugly game last week up in Lambeau, and I don't think any fan was happy walking away from that one, but this is a division game. And if you're Green Bay, you have to win. You have to win. And I mean, your, your seating is pretty much set at three at this point. You can't go up 
unless a miracle happens. You can't really move down because everybody else is, is just slightly out of your reach. So you got to keep winning. You know, you got to stay on course. You have only your you can only play your schedule. You know what I mean? Can't play everybody else's. So if you're Green Bay, you've got to win all your games. So that means no matter what happens, if a miracle happens, you get the opportunity to move up. Or if some miracle from below happens, you don't drop. Like, you don't want to be switching uh, seeds with anybody else. And obviously, the Green Bay Packers, at worst, will finish with the third seed, in my opinion. They can't go to the four because of just how laughably bad Dallas is. They all, the, the Cowboys and the Eagles and the whoever in the NFC East has a shot still mathematically cannot match the win total of the Green Bay Packers. So the Packers at least have the third seed wrapped up if they just continue to win out and so do the one and two. So, uh, yeah, Green Bay, keep winning. Go to the playoffs. Then starting the 4 o'clock games is the Vikings and the Chargers. Vikings should win this game. They better win this game. I mean, it's an, it's an easy win on paper. Chargers have done... Nothing this year. They look very bad. So, I've got Minnesota. And the Jaguars will be taking on the Raiders. Two teams that had a little bit of, you know, success through a couple of these stretches earlier in the year. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that right in the mic. But, uh, and then they just completely fell off a cliff. And neither team, to me, looks better than the other at this point, but... I'm going to pick the Raiders just because I just did a coin toss in my head. And um, the Raiders came out on top. Neither of these teams are going to the playoffs. And uh, this game is just pretty much about pride at this point. Then we've got the Browns and the Cardinals. This, again, is a game the Browns need to and should win if they want any chance of going to the playoffs. Because mathematically, they're still in it. They need a miracle to go. But they are still in it at the moment. And I have them beating Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Yeah, two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. Come Wait, did Baker win a Heisman? Oh, he did. Yeah, he's in the Heisman house. So, yeah. Baker and Murray, two Heisman winning quarterbacks going up against each other. I love it. And it's not like when Jameis and uh, Mariota did it because Jameis and Mariota both suck. So I'm going with the Browns. Then the Rams will take on the Cowboys. Rams need to and should win this game if they win any chance of making the wild card. This is a playoff team. Technically right now, the playoffs were going to end today. The Rams, excuse me, are playing a playoff team. So this is a big test for L.A. <laughs> no matter which way you look at it, it's still a playoff team. And if they don't win then there's going to be a lot of scrutiny in L.A. And I think, honest to God, Sean McVay's job might be and should be in jeopardy for the significant fall from grace. They went to the Super Bowl, had the most dominant offense and dominant defense in the land. And then this year, they're a doormat for eight weeks. So, Rams need this win. I'm taking the Rams. Then the Falcons will visit the 49ers. 49ers should roll the Falcons pretty easily. Uh, I don't see any way the Falcons put a wrinkle on them, you know, and, and hamper their spot at securing the number one seed for the remainder of the season. So San Francisco, as long as you win this game, I think you're pretty much golden because if Seattle, for some reason, were to lose to Carolina, it's pretty much an insurmountable lead at this point, and you've got the whole thing wrapped up. So... Yeah, let's go 49ers. Then the Bills will be taking on the Steelers, the game you're watching right here on Sunday Night Football. Steelers, I think, are the most overrated team right now in the NFL. Look at who, I mean, just look at the teams they've beaten. Who'd they beat last week? I honestly don't remember, but who the hell did they beat? No, I really want to remember now. I don't know. I think it was Arizona. They beat Arizona last week. They beat Arizona at some point. 
and Arizona's not a, a great win for them. And I had to hear all about people saying, the Steelers, the Steelers are so good. The Steelers are making the playoffs. And the Steelers aren't doing nothing. Even if they do make the playoffs, it's a similar situation with Dallas. Who in the hell are they going to beat? Are they beating Kansas City? In Kansas City? Are they beating the Tennessee Titans? Well, I mean, maybe. The Tennessee Titans or the Houston Texans? Texans? In one of their stadiums, in Nissan Stadium or in NRG Stadium? Are they winning on the road in Houston or Tennessee? Are they winning on the road in Kansas City? It's not gonna happen. Sorry, Steelers fans. This is it's it's like when a girl is interested in you, but she's really not interested in you. So she's just teasing you and leading you on, you know, up until the point where you're ready to commit, and then boom, you put your cards on the table, and she backs out all of a sudden, because she was never really that interested in the first place. That's the Steelers this year. They're not interested in you. What they're interested in is looking pretty for you. So that way you buy in and you give them your money and you sell out the home games. But then when they don't make the playoffs, everybody's going to be calling for Mike Tomlin's head. But nobody cares. You know what I mean? Because the Steelers still suck. I've always hated the Pittsburgh Steelers. I will never not hate the Pittsburgh Steelers. It has nothing to do with, you know, the head coach. Well, it does because I hate Mike Tomlin. The dude stepping on the sideline during a play to trip up a player who is running on the sideline into the end zone for a touchdown. But, um, never liked the Steelers. I hate their fans. I hate their players. I hate everything about them. There's nothing I don't hate about the Pittsburgh Steelers, honestly. I mean... I just hate everything about them. But, uh, and, and then the Bills. The Buffalo Bills showed me the world last week against uh, Baltimore. And I read an article earlier this week about how there's no moral victories in football if you're Buffalo. You can't just beat, you can't just come close to beating Baltimore. And, and consider that to be a big moral victory because, you know, I, I mean, I, I think there are moral victories. When you play a team that good, that hard, and that well for four quarters, you've shown something to the entire world, you know, that you are, you are legit, that you are on schedule, you know, to give the New England Patriots a run for their money offensively. The Buffalo Bills, I think, put, impose a very big challenge to New England. And defensively, I think they're re they are very much good enough to beat Tom Brady right now and his band of really well above average talent around him that everybody seems to be blaming because they're not doing their job correctly, but nobody ever gave that sort of pass to any other great quarterbacks who had no talent around them but couldn't win but it only applies to Tom Brady because he's Tom Brady and people like to find a way to bitch and and complain and moan and groan about oh Tom Brady's got no help but every other quarterback who ever had no help in their life is garbage but Tom Brady's not yeah I hate Patriots fans too assholes so the Bills are gonna win this game on Sunday night and they're gonna encroach on the Patriots territory and mark it right now, the Buffalo Bills will win the AFC East. Mark it. I said it right here on this video. Okay. I've got Buffalo. And then on Monday night, it's the Colts and the Saints. Uh, the Colts just, they've looked apathetic for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I've got New Orleans. Big time, I've got New Orleans. They looked good. They looked great <laughs> offensively against uh, San Francisco. They couldn't stop a nosebleed, though. But um, they go into this game against a bad Colts team, and it shouldn't be a trap game. I think that they've got the ability to go out, have a big showing, and win. So I'm all in on the New Orleans Saints. So there you go. I picked the Saints on Monday night.
And that's going to do it for week 15, ladies and gentlemen, with two, actually, including this week, with three weeks left in the regular season. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> including this week with, yeah, five, six, seven, yeah, with three weeks left in the regular season. Things are starting to become clear, but also very murky at the same time. If you're a Patriots or a Cowboys fan, I hate you. Uh, if you're any other fan of any other team in the league, have a great enjoyment of football. <laughs> enjoy football tonight. Enjoy football on Sunday. Enjoy football on Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, in the most rounded, winded, awful way I could possibly tell you, enjoy football Enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.